The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view, and I lose my place in what I was saying. And joining me today on the panel, good start, joining me today on the panel are Thomas and Herho. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Dom. It's good to be here. And Father Corey Stika. Hey, Father Corey. Hey, Dom, but no, this isn't Secrets of Doctor Who, so... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what day is it? If it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium. <laughs> Before we get started into this crazy circus that we're starting, uh, I want to tell you about another show on the StarQuest Network you are sure to enjoy called The Secrets of Star Trek. You can find that wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash Star Trek. So we decided this, we were recording this about a week out, less than a week out from the U.S.'s national elections, the midterm elections. I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing from politicians mm. and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. But, and so we're not directly talking about politics, but we're talking about something that's semi-related and isn't just about politics, which is managing misinformation, dealing with fake news, disinformation. It's been called lots mm -hmm. of things. And it's become a big deal over the past six years or so, you know, the, mm. and, and even more so uh, because of social media. And so we all have, we're all exposed to it. We're all having to deal with it. We all have suffered the consequences of it. So what, are, what can we do about it? And what is it to begin with? And I think that's really where we should start. So mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, I'll ask you that if, if you have a working definition of, you know, misinformation or disinformation? Uh, and if the, is there a difference? Uh, yeah, well, there's a difference between the two of those. And that's, I think it's really important to realize the difference between the two of those because misinformation is just the things that are very emotional that you can easily attach to and that give you kind of a blanket uh, statement about something that is designed to get you angry, uh, make you feel good, uh, euphoric not just good but euphoric um right. yeah but most often angry and that's that's the that's where we're going to kind of i think lean a lot with this too uh so that, that's misinformation now disinformation is like a targeted campaign where someone some group of actors or something is designing a a system that is spreading information now they use misinformation to do it but mm -hmm. it's with a purpose so it has some kind of goal at the end of it right that's yeah. a good definition yeah this disinformation there's someone's got a someone's purposefully trying to m affect some sort of change or event or something mm -hmm. misinformation is just you know sometimes i think even just misinformation is just bad information it's just mm -hmm. it's a it's error you know it, it could even be an innocent error that spreads but it right. but it's it's error some very often it's not innocent but you know but let's let's hope uh so father cory and I, I mean, I would say with, like with disinformation that a lot of times it's distorted information, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it, it, there might be a truth to it. There might be that little nugget of truth, but it's, it's just enough to, you know, pass the smell test, so to speak, where, right. you know, you're, you're, you're going to listen to it and hear that, you know, President Biden is really a, you know, a lizard skin alien. <laughs> okay. That's right. flat out wrong. That's flat right. out misinformation. By the way, according to our handlers, it is flat out. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it, but but you know, but you could you could say that you know he's got some illness, and well, yeah, he might have an illness. He might you know he's he's gotten COVID a couple of times, right? But you could use that to then distort. So because of that, he can't work as president anymore. You know, right. something right. like that. Something along those lines, where it's we take something that's probably true and we shade it. We put a you mm -hmm. know we change the context, so we add some. Uh, some other nuances that put a different, a particular spin on it. I mean, it, we don't need to spend a lot of time, I guess, 
explaining it because we we were all marinating in it all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So I think the, the the big question then is is what do we do about it? Um, so, we, uh, but first thing, you know, it's not new. I mean, we've had mm -hmm. you, if you know, I remember when I was in history class in school, they they talked about the yellow journalism of the 19th century and the early 20th century. You know, the right. newspapers spreading all kinds of you know flat sometimes flat out lies. I mean, back in the, mm -hmm. back in the day, uh, we've had a lot of laws and you know, judicial rulings that have kind of sorted <laughs> some of that out, but there used to be just flat out, you know, falsehoods in the papers. And so it's not a new thing. Well, it goes back to the Bible. We actually see it in the Bible. Look in the Acts of the Apostles. You see the scribes and the Pharisees trying to spread misinformation about our Lord. Right. I mean, actively, you know, the, 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 you see him actually in, in his trial, too, where misinformation is being, you know, he said that, you know, if you tear down the temple, you know, he would personally build it back in three days, right. you right. know, something like that, and, you know, and so it, it's part of human nature there, you know, oh, we don't like this people, this person, we don't like this group, so we are going to attack them. And how do we do that? Well, we make them look bad. Mm -hmm. Right down to uh, having you right God putting it right in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness. False witness. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so that's right. Um, <laughs> now, the the problem is, is today, it's faster. You know, we're all connected all the time, and so this stuff can spread faster, and it can be more convincing because we can make pictures and videos, mm -hmm. you know, deep fakes and all this stuff to make it mm -hmm. much more convincing and harder to sift through. And so that's that's a big part of what's going on. So. You know, we, we want to talk about, you know, how do we avoid it? Like, what, what are the, the big ways to avoid things? And um, one of the ways we end up being susceptible is we end up in silos or tribes, mm -hmm. uh, both usually. Um, and yep. what I say silo is, you know, where we are, we're only listening to like-minded people. The only source of whatever information we get are people who think like us, talk like us, believe like us. And then you start to believe that those are the only right ones, the only true ones, the only the only ones who know what's going on. And then we we have a tribe that we identify with. And the problem with tribalism is we 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 be, we belong to the tribe and we advance the tribe's goals, but we don't actually have necessarily have principles. So that if the mm -hmm. tribe all decides today that the sky is orange, then God says the, the sky is orange, despite what yeah. your whatever your eyes may tell you. And and along with that too, the, it, there's a, there's an othering that goes on, and, yes. and the, that's the other part of it. And so you you t tapped on it with the silos, but with the tribalism, it happens too. Where if you're not part of my tribe, you must be wrong, and and. We do that mm -hmm. naturally to protect our tribe because we don't want someone else to have access to the right if we don't if we're not part of their tribe. And so we push them out and say, well, you must be wrong. Whatever you say must be wrong. Anything you say must be wrong because you can't have it right or you would be part of my tribe. Right. right. And we, we tend to then uh, stack up like whatever that tribe believes. So everything, if you're a member of that tribe, then everything you advance in that tribe is wrong. So that we, mm -hmm. there is no common ground. And this is a right. big problem. Like if you, you know, you're, you are a conservative Catholic, therefore you must uh, be pro-life, uh, but you also must be against high taxes and you must vote Republican. And you, and then suddenly we're all like, yep. oh, whoa, whoa, that's not what the church says, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the, you can't have common ground. And I've seen people who are liturgically conservative say, just as an example, and pro-life uh, expounding on uh, the death penalty is the only, is, you know, is mandatory and we need lower taxes and yeah. immigration policy. And, and like, you know, it's okay to be against high taxes or against low taxes, but that's not necessary necessarily <laughs> part of like uh, it, it's not necessary to being you know part of this group or that group being a good Catholic or whatever. I don't want to get too much into the politics of things, but I'm just trying to illustrate that the what happens in tribalism. Well, and that's that's a consequence of the siloing of where this is the view. And it must match this view. And if you are outside of this view in any way whatsoever. You're outside of my silo. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and and then, of course, you know, we we see you know, this going to 1984, the book 1984. You know, you see, you know, that the two minutes hate where they have got this person mm -hmm. who everybody is hating off of. And why are they hating off him? Because he's not part of their silo. He's not part mm -hmm. of who the you know big brother says you have to be. 
And so right. we're just going to, and it doesn't matter what he says. It's just, right. just someone, there's someone needs to be the, the other. Right. Right. So, so we need to, uh, you know, so part of this is, um, we need to try to listen to people who might not agree with us. And I want to get into some specifics in a bit, but so, but siloing and tribalism are, are two parts of the problems. And um, so some things we need to think about for ourselves is when we're, when we're seeing a story, say, you, you know, something a story that if, it, if you, like you said, Thomas, if you have an immediate strong reaction, either positively mm-hmm. or negatively, the first step is to stop <laughs> and ask some <laughs> right. questions. Where mm-hmm. is this story coming from? What is the source? Qui bono is a famous uh, Latin phrase, which means who benefits? Who benefits from this story? Who benefits from the outrage? Okay. Does this story serve someone's particular interests? Um, and uh, there's also another part of it, which, well, I, I don't want to, I want to kind of get into the list of ways we can mm-hmm. respond. Okay. But those okay. are some of the first <laughs> questions we can ask. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, I have my, my notes here and I've kind of <laughs> separated them out to two different things, but really I want to talk about what we can do about misinformation. Um, and especially with our technology. And that's because what, that's what we're here about. Right. right. Well, and I think that's, that's one of the things to, to start talking about this. We need to start talking about algorithms and how, yes. mm-hmm. uh, you know, how these, how social media has kind of advanced this and here here's the problem uh when you look at the things online that get interactions that get immediate reactions that get likes that get reposts um that get uh, you know a lot of commentary and a lot of build in the the comments beneath it the those things are they tend to be incendiary they tend to be mm-hmm. uh dangerous in in some way they're, they're they single people out they uh have a view that gets people riled up and it causes a lot of reaction because it causes a lot of conflict whereas you'll have something that's shared that's banal that's just an everyday thing and it it'll get some likes it'll get maybe a couple of shares Mm -hmm. but honestly you're not going to share uh that cute puppy video that your friend shared you might look at it and chuckle and move on with life Mm -hmm. and the computer is not picking up on that interaction. The computer is only picking up on those likes and shares, which happen most often on posts that are in somehow inflaming that make you want to do something that make you want to activate your, your sense of uh, justice around them. Right. Either positive or negative, right? right? I'm either, I'm either very positively disposed to what this thing is saying, or I'm very negatively disposed to what this thing is saying. That's the big, that's exactly. the big thing. So what do we do? Well, the first thing is, is to know that there's an algorithm that's manipulating mm-hmm. things. I mean, that's really, <laughs> that's really the first step. I have a, I'm going to put it on the show notes, a series of videos from Destin from Smarter Every Day, who, uh, the YouTube channel, he did a series of videos a couple of years ago on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube, how their algorithms, uh, and, and what, what Thomas just talked about, how it's manipulating this, everything, mm-hmm. um, so there are there are ways to deal with that and uh, tech from a technological standpoint, like, for example, Twitter, Twitter has an algorithm and it, and it tries to show you the things that it thinks you want to see. And I hear people complaining about that all the time. I just want to see the people I follow. Well, I did, I get to see everyone I follow. In reverse chronological order, you know, like from the oldest to the newest uh, and no ads. And you know how I do that? I use an app on the Mac called an iOS called Tweetbot. <laughs> Which you can subscribe to uh, or or purchase. I purchased it a long time ago. I think it's now a subscription model, to be honest. But um, but if you really want to enjoy Twitter, that's that's the way to do it. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to still see just, you know, uh, people spreading disinformation in their tweets, the people you follow. But it's going to cut down on some of the efforts, effects of the algorithm on you. Mm -hmm. Right. But you can you can see the algorithm in, algorithm in effect on YouTube, especially where, mm-hmm. you know, let's say there's a, a particular channel you really enjoyed watching, you know, you enjoyed what they're doing. They're doing Minecraft streaming or whatever. Yeah. And then kind of one day you realize I haven't seen that video on those channel in a while. And it's because the algorithm noticed you while, yes, you were watching this guy, you were watching these other channels of this type of material, let's say mm-hmm. car mechanics. So now you're seeing a lot more car mechanics in your stream. And that YouTube or that Minecraft streamer just kind of got pushed back. He's still out there doing his thing. You're just not seeing his material. 
Right. Because YouTube is constantly trying to tweak what it's showing you based off what you're focusing on right now. And Facebook does the right. same thing and Twitter yes. does the same thing. Yes. And one way to combat that, by the way, on YouTube is to subscribe to a channel and then go to the subscriptions tab mm -hmm. in YouTube. Every, yes. You know, whenever you're going to watch videos. So go to YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's on the top uh, left on, in, on the browser. It's on the top left. Yep. There's a hamburger menu, you know, the three, the three, um, yep. slashes click on that and there should be subscriptions in there and it will show you all the channels you've subscribed to their videos in reverse chronological order from newest down yep. to oldest i do that and i use an app that i'll it'll be a feature pick of the week called play to to keep track of the videos i want to watch mm -hmm. um, and that's a hint yep. on some of those media don't use yeah. the recommended as easy as it is to use the, the front screen that shows recommended and you just start clicking yeah don't well and although sometimes it's kind of useful like i uh, I've discovered fun things that way. And I, I like to be recommended things that are like the things I already like. So that's, mm -hmm. that's part is okay. It's the manipulation and not showing me the things I want to see that really bothers me. Um, uh, Instagram is a real bad version of this. Like I sometimes, I, I have stopped looking at reels, Instagram reels, which mm -hmm. is like their version of TikTok. Because it drives me batty because like I'll see, oh, look, a cute puppy. And I'll stay and watch a cute puppy video. And then now all these cute puppies. I want my Star yeah. Wars content. Give me my Star Wars back. You know? And then I, Star Wars cute puppies. Right, cute puppies I, in Star Wars. No. I get a search for Star Wars content and like a bunch of them. And then it will start showing me them again. It's just, it kind of, Facebook is the same way. It drives me crazy. I have to go search out the, the sort of thing I want and like yeah. a bunch. Is, <laughs> is this how it's supposed to be? Anyway, that's, this is. Sorry, our, sorry got, it, got off on a tangent. Yeah, uh, this is dealing with the algorithm but, so much. But, but the algorithm that, uh, you know, that's, and the same thing is happening. And, and this is, this is the thing is that the same thing is happening with the curated content that we're talking about where this mis right. misinformation, that's the reason that it gets, uh, it gets in people's faces and it gets spread so easily because we're so used to kind of having it delivered to us. And then we see this thing and we see it has many likes, it has many mm -hmm. reshares and that even if, even if we're aware of it and, and I do this with myself all the time, I have to take a step back and go, okay, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah. I see that it has many likes. I see that it has many shares. That does not mean that it's true. That does not mean that right. it is good, that it is helpful or that I really even should trust it because just because it has a lot of shares doesn't mean that everyone vetted it. It doesn't even mean that right. everyone watched it. And that's the thing that I think we really got to be careful of is that that's a big one, you know, the title, the clickbait title has become like share bait. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You, that I, I would love to see a statistic and I don't think anyone's ever done a, a, any serious research on this, but how many things that are reshared on Twitter or Facebook or wherever are actually clicked through first and read by the person mm -hmm. sharing? Mm -hmm. I would say it's probably fairly low because mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, when I see stuff, I'm like, wow, this is kind of, wow, this is amazing. Uh, this is, you know, weird, scary, uh, outrageous. And I click through, mm -hmm. I'm like, sometimes it's, yeah, th that is scary, weird, outrageous. Sometimes it's like, well, I mean, there's another way to look at that, you know, mm -hmm. but, but you got to click through, you got to see it for yourself. So, th so that's one of the things is go beyond the headlines, go beyond the clickbait, click through. If, if, if something is activating that, the outrage cycle or yeah. or whatever click through find out what's actually what it actually says so that's that's one tip and when you click through if you're not familiar with the source like for example if you see you know an article to the new york times you know what you're going to get the washington post you know what you're going to get in case of montana the billings gazette or the great falls tribune you know what you're going to get but there's it's very easy to create good looking well written fake sites and that's and actually i was just hearing on a, a source that I, I is reputable that both sides of the current campaigns uh, election campaigns have made local newspapers quote mm -hmm. unquote right that aren't they are completely made up to push their view same thing has happened with medical information that journals that didn't exist five years ago are suddenly there now as a reputable supposedly peer-reviewed journal and so on. So you get to a, a site that you're not familiar with, go and kind of do a little investigation on the site too. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, cause it might, it might be, you know, yeah, you might get, you know, the Iowa times or I don't even know what the, the Des Moines newspaper is Register. and it might be legitimate. 
I don't know register. why I know that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just do. <laughs> so you get to the Des Moines Register. I've never heard of it. Oh, wait, this is actually like the real Des Moines newspaper. So this is a real thing. Yeah. But you might get to the Des Moines time and go, huh? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it kind of know your sources too, because your source, you know, sources can look reputable and not be. And, mm-hmm. and then sometimes there's a, like, if you get to a news article, Where's what's their source? Sometimes they're reporting on a study or on Mm -hmm. somebody else's news report. Go go beyond to that. I can't Mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've read newspaper articles in, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, like the big ones. And they have these big, you know, flashy headlines. And I go through to the original, say, study, research study or medical study. And I read it. I'm like, that's not really what it says. Like, it's like Mm -hmm. you've, Mm -hmm. you've taken that abstract, you've boiled it down and gotten entirely wrong or unsupported conclusion out of that. Um, Well, well, here's, here's, here's an example. I remember from a kid when I was a kid, there, there was a newspaper article that walking barefoot in grass could lead to cancer. (laughs) It was a real serious, serious newspaper article. Wow. And I, I went back, looked at it later and it turned out that, you know, there is, if, it basically was because of the pesticides and chemicals I was we used say, on yeah, the grass. Probably something we did, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. It was. It's not that walking barefoot on grass was bad, but but that was the headline: walking barefoot on grass leads to cancer. Well, here's something. I so something from my own experience. Uh, for years, I've seen these uh, politicians trying to pass laws against texting while driving because texting while driving is killing hundreds of people a year. It is a scourge on America. People are dying left and right because they're texting while driving. I'm like, what are the actual numbers here? So I, I went to the NTSB, the National Transportation yeah. Safety Board website. They have statistics every year. That's government is good at compiling statistics. And so <laughs> uh, distracted driving, several hundred people a year die from distracted driving. Ah, but distracted driving is not just texting and driving. It includes people talking to one another in the car mm-hmm, yep. and like all kinds of things. Eating so, and driving. Right. So when you dig down, there's something like in the entire United States, something like a hundred and something people die a year from mm-hmm. texting and driving, which is not nothing. That's a hundred people. That's, that's a, that's still a big deal. But then I was like boiling down because they wanted to pass a law in Massachusetts. It's like, Six people in Massachusetts died last year from texting and driving. So now we have to ban people from touching their phones in the car. I'm like, well, my kids are more distracting than, than, you know, my phone. <laughs> now I get it. I get annoyed with people who are sitting at a stoplight looking at their phone instead of going um, when the light turns green. I get that. And we, you shouldn't be looking at your phone instead of looking at the, at the road, but the, but the politicians are and the media and whatever are out there saying hundreds of people are dying from distracted driving. Right. Well, what does that mean? But that, mm-hmm. that that's a case. That's one of those cases too, though, where you could say there's actually more information that makes their argument, but they didn't dig deep enough into it. You know that, that we shouldn't be doing distracted driving because you could say yes, a hundred people died last year from texting while driving, but how many bumper or you know accidents, fender benders yeah. have there been? How many right. times did someone you know miss their exit? How many you know how many times What's did it costing? people cause? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's it costing? Like a number, yeah. you know, a number value. Yeah. You know, I mean, right. how many, again, how many accidents, how many injuries, how many, you know, how many things happen that weren't reported mm-hmm. that, well, sh- that says that, yes, this is a good thing to ban. We should not be yeah. texting while driving, but I, I think one the thing big we, flashy number isn't the one that they should <laughs> right. be talking about. <laughs> right. It's not the deaths. And I, I think the thing to be careful here though, too, is um, you don't have to be a sleuth. Right. Right. And, mm-hmm. and this is this is something because I think there's there's a, a line here where you get to a point where you're like, it's exasperating trying to keep up with all of this stuff. <laughs> and my my the thing that I have to say about that is then just don't click the share button. Don't right. don't mm-hmm. like the thing. Don't share it. If you don't have time to review it, then it's not worth sharing. Yeah. Right. Right. Not everything has to be shared that. Right. And you think that's self-evident. But it's not. I've had people get mad at me because I didn't share a link. Because mm-hmm. if you're not sharing the link, you are part of the problem. I'm right. like, I, 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 like <laughs> that's not that's not how any of this works. Like it's a sort, of, a sort of Seinfeld reaction. That's not how any of this works. Right. That, that, that sounds like the old emails of if you don't forward this on to ten people, you know, <laughs> right. exactly. you know, or you must you must forward this on to people to make sure this doesn't happen. Delete. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like a chain letter. But there's a sort of slacktivism in a sense of I'm doing something by mm-hmm. making people aware. No, in fact, you're probably hurting what you're mm-hmm. the, you, the cause that you support 
because you're sharing a lot of junk along with whatever truth you're trying to get out as well. Right. You're undermining yourself. You need to be more selective about how you support what whatever right. cause or principle or truth that you're supporting. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes like, so that's one of my key points is use reason, not emotion, and certainly oh, not yeah. tribalism. You know, use your mind, slow down. If wait till your emotion is settled, if you're if you're angry and outraged or if you're schadenfreude all up or whatever it is, <laughs> you know, settle down, come back to it, maybe. By the way, I want that for I want to keep that phrase schadenfreude it all up. Yes, that's my new, I'm going to get a T-shirt, actually. I'm, I'm schadenfreude That'll it all That'll be up. the SQBN store. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, another one that that's really important is give the benefit of the doubt. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of times where it's it's unclear, you know, did the person like somebody did something and now we're outraged. OK, someone said a thing and oh, they're obviously anti-Catholic, anti-Semitic and you know, racist, whatever it is you want to say. OK, maybe they aren't. Maybe mm -hmm. they said something that's been taken out of context. Maybe they have said something that they didn't they poorly phrased as someone who sits in front of a microphone all the time. I know how hard it is to make sure you're not phrasing things poorly. And yeah. sometimes well, once in a while, you're going to see something poorly. Well, I know I'll see, you know, within the context of the church, you know, I, I'll admit it. I'm not a Pope Francis fanboy. I'm not the, I, I, he's our Pope. I love him. I honor him as our Pope. Doesn't mean I agree with him. Um, but how many times has a statement come out from one of those famous airline confessional uh, <laughs> press conferences? Sure. And it turns out that's not what he said. Or yeah. what he said was, was an example of what he was trying to speak against. Right. But because he was speaking off the cuff like that, he didn't express himself clearly enough or the press took him out of context anything like you just said dom i mean yeah. so you know you, you got again this is going back to digging deeper what did he what did this person really say right and yeah and so in the absence of being able to dig deeper you can give the benefit of the doubt and you can just not share it <laughs> right yep. so those are a couple um so we talked about you know finding the sources are they reliable dig down um who's the author of the post, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so this person shared this thing on Twitter. Who are they? Who is this person? Do they have an agenda? Are they a real person? Are they a bot? These bots have become pretty convincing. You know, oh, yeah. uh, how many followers does this person have? When did their profile get started? You know, uh, be selective in who you follow and who you allow to friend you uh, is, is a big one. Um, that's, that's a big one. Check the date on stories, by the way. I can't tell you mm, how yeah. often, in it's fact, just happening the other day, someone, a reporter shared this story, like big story, uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Thomas, Clarence Thomas, uh, spoke to Senator, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis just days before the Dobbs announcement. Uh, that seems a clear violation of ethics or something or other. And then someone goes, uh, dude, check the emails. Those emails were from 2021, and the Dobbs decision was 2022, separated. So it was basically 12 months and three days instead of three days. And well, he, to his credit, retracted it and said, I made a huge yeah. error. I'm very sorry. I'm retracting this. But by then, the story had gotten out and around. Mm -hmm. Three three hundred and sixty eight days are just days before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Difference, yes, give or yes. take a few. That's that's that that is an honest error, though. I know there have been that many one's times where I've looked at, yeah. at the years and yeah. like it's twenty two zero two, and I'm like, I'm done. That's a, it. Must be this year, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't even yeah. know what year it is anymore, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've done the like, oh no, so and so has died, and post the headline. It's like. Yeah, uh, he died like three years ago. Look at the uh, date on that. Right. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So embarrassing and so sad. I didn't know they died. Um, yeah. Well, that's better than the, uh, they're still alive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> is he ever go to dead? Uh, so um, check the date. Also, is it a parody? Are you on the Babylon Bee or the mm. Onion? Or mm -hmm. worse, on one of the many, many other sites that think they are funny and really aren't? <laughs> Like poorly, poor satire sites. Yeah. Especially if it's too good, too juicy to be true. It probably is too much to be mm, true. Yeah. It's probably not true. Um, and, you know, check your biases. Am, am I inclined to believe this about that person? Yep. I can't tell you how often I, I am politically conservative in general. Uh, that's not a, a secret. 
And I can't tell you how often, like I hear something about, uh, you know, President Biden or something. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty bad. Um, that, that, that may not be, that, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. That's, that's my, that's, you know, that's marginal. That's sort of thing. You know, I don't want to let my biases predispose me to believing things that aren't true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we all have them. That's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, that's, People it's talk about being unbiased, but we all have biases. All of us. Right. You know, we all look at the world through a certain lens, through a cer certain ideals, certain knowledge, certain beliefs, and we've yeah. got to be willing to recognize those. And that, that's how you, you know, you truly get past those biases, being able to say, well, this is, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm feeling some schadenfreude because of what happened to this politician or that person in the church or this, this celebrity, you know, maybe yeah, I better dial back on this one. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now, one thing we, that has become very popular over the past several years is fact checkers. There are a lot of fact checkers <laughs> out there. And it used to be like Snopes. We go to Snopes, see if the urban legend is true. Okay. And Snopes was, uh, at a t once upon a time, was good for that. Uh, but online fact checking them sites themselves can be problematic and biased. And, and, and even that's no longer a reliable me means to determine whether something is true or not. Um, you, yeah. you really got to dig deeper if you, re if you're really hunting for the truth and that's problematic because Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, rely on a lot of these sites that have their own biases mm -hmm. to do their fact checking. What? Well, and I will say it's, it's important to get print media. I, I, I beat this drum. My wife beats this drum. We, we subscribe mm. to our local newspaper and we get, oh, yeah. they, I mean, they've, they've cut back a lot. We used to get daily, um, you know, and they only do Sunday and Wednesday now, but we get oh, the wow. Sunday, Wednesday paper. And um, it's it, the reason for that is that it costs money to print a paper. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, I mean, yes, they're going to have a slant, right? I mean, they, at yes. newspapers just do journalists do there. You, you can, you can understand what that is and you can adjust for it but it costs them money to print that stuff. So they are going to check the facts pretty thoroughly. They're going to vet their sources. They're going to go through and uh, do a good job. And, you know, they'll make retractions where retractions are, are applicable. And the, the quality of the writing is, is pretty good too. Uh, in most modern papers, they do a pretty good job, but I, I, that physical print media is really important because you can't just throw it together in two seconds and put mm -hmm. it out there and not worry about it. And, it goes wild on its own and gets all the clicks and all the interactions and engagements. Right. Um, yeah. So it, it, it takes a little bit to get there. And I like that. I like the fact that that's the way that the print media has to be. And I'll be honest, I don't have a Facebook anymore. Uh, if, if I do, it's like, it's a zombie Facebook. I, don't, I think I have, I think I have completely removed myself to try, try to at least. And um, I haven't used my Twitter in ages. So I mean, my, my silo of information right now is Reddit and that one is, it's mostly I get to I get to curate a lot of what goes into that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's not heavily political. It's mostly just my hobbies and interests that uh, go on in there. And then for the more day to day real stuff, I get that from my print media. That's where I go for it. That's no, that's good. You know, that uh, Destin, uh, in one of his articles, he talks about how uh, the videos he talks about how the cycle of how news should go. And that there should be a vetting before it's printed. Right. And of course, now with, with the online newspapers, quote unquote, they just, they want to get it out as quick as possible. Something mm -hmm. happens and they want to get it out. So they write it up and they throw it up there and then they correct it later. Mm -hmm. Right. You That's know, they a problem. Edit. Yeah. But uh, one thing with fact checkers, you know, first of all, who, who facts checks the fact checkers, <laughs> right, but right. Uh, who, watches who watches the watchers. Uh, <laughs> but if, if you ever see a fact checker and a lot of, a lot of them like to do this, unfortunately, where they'll take a quote and they will nitpick one little thing mm. and they'll say it's false because the president said all people did this and only 95% of people did this <laughs> right. false, you know, and, and then there's some of those fact checkers are doing that. That's the one where you say, okay, this is not a reputable fact checker, right. even yeah. if it's from a major organization and some of them are. You know, on the newspaper thing, uh, I'm we're lucky enough here in Boston to have two major daily papers, the Boston Herald, the Boston Globe. I subscribe to the digital versions of both. Uh, I read mm -hmm. the Globe every day, especially because I disagree with most of their slant. I want to hear <laughs> what they have to say. And it, sometimes right. it's a little, I get a little outraged, but I know what's going on, what people are saying 
outside of right. my silo. And that's a big thing. I, and I love getting the digital version, frankly. It's, uh, uh, it, it's better than having stacks of paper every day, mm-hmm. having to deal with that recycling, <laughs> all that. Uh, if you want a really nice, unbiased news source, which I think I've had as a pick before, uh, I get a d- daily email called the 1440 Daily Digest. Yes. yes. Uh, and you go to join1440.com. Uh, it is the most unbiased, unslanted news source I think I've seen out there. And it gives you the top stories you need to know. So here, today's was uh, about the Seoul, Korea, the South Korea um, Halloween uh, tragedy of the people being trampled. Um, a member of the FCC uh, commission called for a ban on TikTok in the U.S. That's something we should probably talk about at some point. Um, yeah. And then something about the Brazil elections and then sports, science, business, pol- you know, some political brief things. Um, and then they'll have like an et cetera section with fun links to things. And, you know, every day, a little bit, 15, 20 minutes, I get the high points and I don't get a slant. Uh, and frankly, I there are others like that out there. I You know, it definitely... I, I really appreciate having something like that as well. Um, so that's a, that's a good resource. And, and many other news sources have similar things. Like uh, just think, uh, one news source I, I like uh, for the church is the Pillar. Pillar Catholic. J.D. Flynn. Yep. Yeah, Pillar Catholic, J.D. Flynn and Ed Condon. And they just recently did, created something like that called the Starting Seven. Yep. And if you support them, you can get on their mailing list for that. And that's similar thing. You know, here's just headlines. Here's, you know, bullet points. Here's what's going on. Again, no slant, just here's the story. Seven things you and need to know to s- that's going on in the church yeah. today. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, really other, other news sources do similar things, so you can look out for those as well. You know, they're, they're great, great ways to just get the basic information. Yep. So one last thing I want to say uh, on this is before sharing anything that's sort of outrageous or inflammatory or that's really got you going, stop and ask yourself, is it kind is it true? Is it necessary? Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. that's the that should be the basic Christian response to anything that we do. Is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? And if it fails any of those, then don't do it. Just just yeah. hold off. I have decreased my posting and sharing on social media over the past few years by a large degree. Uh, I think in a, in many ways, partly because of the way the climate is, of of online has changed. Uh, Mm -hmm. partly because I've seen people I respect who do a better job of it than I did. Um, Like, I think, for example, I'll just call him out. He's a friend, Jimmy Aiken. I'm not saying this Mm -hmm. because I do a podcast with him, but I, his presence on social media is kind and charitable and restrained. And he shares only good, nice things and never, Mm -hmm. you know, inflammatory things. And, you know, he has a much nicer uh, crowd around him online because of it. And I'm like, you know what? I want some of that too. So I've kind of started to emulate how he does that. And so I don't share political things in general. Um, Although I have to admit, uh, I think the three of us all belong to a a nice little community of private where we can Mm -hmm. share things with in a a small community (laughs) and kind of vent and maybe find something like that where you have a Mm -hmm. very small group of people you trust that where it's a safe place to kind of talk about things and to talk things out mm-hmm. and, and share. Well, and share it's, it's a, yeah. there are different viewpoints. Cause I know that I'm, I have very different viewpoints than several of the yep. members of that community, but we yeah. share a common thread in our faith and in our, mm-hmm. our rational perspective on things that yes. a, a, a good conversation will happen. Even if we disagree. Right. 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 It's the, the primary, the prime directive, if you will, of of this small community is charity in all things. We are all friends here first yep. and foremost, right. and we can be friends if we disagree. And I think if we've lost anything in our society, it's this idea that we can be friends if we disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, the we need to find that back, or we're going to have a very very bad end as a society. Yeah. Uh, I, I say that it's in true. all sincerity. Yeah. And, and I, I say this kind of half in joking, but in, if you find yourself constantly being in that state of, you know, upset and, and anxious because of everything you're reading on Facebook, put down the phone and go outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, literally, or, you know, obviously, yes, you know, not everybody can, but, you know, just walk away from it. Leave it. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're losing your peace by by being on, you know, reading the watching the news on TV, reading the paper or anything, if you're losing it, none of this 
big new stuff really at the end matters to your individual life to a to a great degree that you can you can affect it you can change it i mean it's, mm-hmm. it's important to be well informed about things and you know to vote and make your voice heard but not at the cost of your sanity of your of your of your balance of your uh of your peace in your soul uh get away from it if you have to and i think i think in many ways life was much better when people lived on the frontier and didn't know what was going on back in washington <laughs> dc and the biggest concern was is the crop going to come in this season yeah well, that's I've joked about that with with uh, this, you know, everything, you know, the latest uproar about the Pope. It's like, yeah, I kind of miss the days when, you know, the, the missionaries were out here and they didn't even know who the current Pope was. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and they were just praying for whichever Pope was the Pope when they left their you know main base. Right. You know, so it's like they didn't know that the Pope had died and been replaced. Didn't matter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, again, this is it's a, one of those one of those topics that's always evolving. We would love to hear from listeners. If you have uh, feedback or questions on this topic, we would love to hear from you. And maybe if you have some specifics of about uh, technological resources and ways to deal with it, we would love to, to help and to, to hear from you. Uh, you can email us at technology at sqpn.com or uh, she'll go to our discord community. Let's have a conversation yep. there. This, okay. Our discord community, let me say right here is one of the nicest communities online Mm -hmm. Uh, we are working really hard to make it a a nice place where we don't have any of the nonsense and the outrage clickbait or anything like that we really try to curate it very carefully to make it a pleasant place to be we've had a couple of times where people want to kind of get things going we're like uh why don't you back off on that (laughs) yeah let's (laughs) or maybe find another one yeah there are plenty (laughs) of places on the internet for for that but you know come (laughs) come and join us in this pleasant place and and you don't have to bring that yeah. We, we want to geek out. We don't want to worry about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can join us on our Discord at sqpn.com slash Discord. All right. Before we move on to the rest of our uh, headline this week, uh, I want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology, including Abe, Michael C., Joshua V., Roman V., and Luke P., their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. So our uh, first of our headlines that I want to talk about now is Amazon has abandoned its home <laughs> delivery robot tests. And uh, <laughs> So in 2019, Amazon had this uh, robot they call Scout that would, the idea is they want to they reduce the amount of um, greenhouse gas emissions. And so these little electric robots would travel through neighborhoods. And the way it worked is it would roll up to the door and the customer would come to the door, it would pop its lid and you'd take your package out. Um, and... I, they it's been basically positioned as it's not that the idea of home delivery robots is bad. It's that the economy being where it is there, all these companies are having to, uh, you know, cut costs and consolidate. But I like the idea of, you know, delivery robots and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. I just don't like, I look at, there's a picture of it in this article. We'll, we'll have the link to, and you've probably seen ones like this uh, in other articles but it's so small. And I'm like, A, I get packages bigger than this robot. <laughs> so those would still have to be delivered by a van. Oh, yeah. But B, wh- if I'm not there, what does it do with it? <laughs> it just sits at your door and yeah. runs into it. <laughs> Until I come home, yeah. you know? It's like, uh, and I have a parcel delivery box that half the time the delivery guy figures out that's where the package goes. Like literally, mm-hmm. sometimes he puts it on top of the parcel delivery box. It's like a mailbox. You put it inside. You know what I mean? Just put it yeah. in. I have a sign on top that says "Put packages inside." Doesn't do any good. So well, at least he put it on it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the robot can't be worse than that. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> but what do you guys think? I mean, it, is is it is it a is it a bad thing that they're getting rid of it? Or I mean, are we going to have delivery robots inevitably? I really don't think so. Um, I think the, the package problem is is a continuous robot problem. This is it's the same as the folding clothes problem. These are these are, are mm-hmm. problems that we just can't handle in AI right now. Right. A human can look at a box and figure out how to hold it and how to move yep. it and how to position it. And robots just they don't have the spatial awareness to be able to do that. And in something this simple, it's it, it, totally a novelty like this is 
definitely just a nerdy thing mm-hmm. that was and, and and i can see why you would cut a team like this in a time where you know the economy's going a little bad it's like eh, we don't really have the time to the money to throw at this for it not to be anything more than an advertising campaign right so right. just just move on um i really don't think that there is an inevitability to um robot delivery uh i would love it if we could stop like pushing amazon drivers as hard as we are yes, because, yes. uh you know they really they need they need more time they need breaks they need to not be on the clock quite the way they are but i don't i, I don't foresee robots being the answer to that issue <laughs> right right yeah, I always feel bad when a driver shows up at 10 o'clock at night or right? on a Sunday. Yeah. Like, I wish I could say, <laughs> you know, don't deliver on Sundays. Like, I'll take right. it on Monday. You just, you know, yeah. uh, it always oh, feel you, bad. you got that luxury? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, in the Boston area. I got I got three Amazon warehouses within a 15-minute drive. It's like there's more Amazon warehouses than we have gas stations <laughs> or something. It was It's kind of crazy, actually. You know, I, I almost wonder if in the very near future, Amazon is going to have these neighborhood delivery locations where <laughs> you go to that place and there's all these bins, that, you know, they can call them Amazon boxes and you, they put your package in that box and they you're given a code to open it, you know, like a key. Oh wait, that sounds like the post office. Well, you know what? Yeah. Those already exist. Like if you, if I know you they a, do. No, no, I mean like if you have a Whole Foods near you, there are lo- no, Amazon lockers in there. Uh, which and there is- was there was with the uh, Coles was another one. Yeah. Some of the Coles locations would have those. And seven, yeah, yeah. no, I, I know that, that. I'm being kind of sarcastic. I I don't see any kind of robotic delivery being practical. Like you said, just because of the the differences in size of packages. Right. Until they're actually carrying the packages like we do in our hands mm-hmm. right you know yeah the, this little this little cooler three-wheel cooler <laughs> isn't going to hold much more than a couple of books or a, yeah. you know you get a the little foam lined or bubble wrap line uh, uh envelopes and things like that yeah that's you know, it's not going to hold a, a serious a serious um package and you know i don't know maybe it will happen someday i honestly i i wouldn't be surprised if they start doing things like, like I said, jokingly, but you know, the neighborhood delivery areas where you have to go to a building that's down the block or, or whatever. So bear with me. They have a building that's in each town that they send out trucks from every day to bring mm-hmm. stuff to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we've reinvented the U S postal service. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. that's essentially what it already has done, right? Yeah. It's not, it, it's, it's not uh, very different. Yeah. Not very far from that. <laughs> but it's it kind of fascinating to me. There were 400 people working on this. I mean, mm-hmm. Amazon is such a massive company, you know? Yeah. yeah. And they can just have 400 people working on a pet project. I wonder how many people have been working on Amazon drone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, and that's, it's, it's, it's a big problem. And that's, I think it's one of those things that it's like the, the technology that it would take to do something like this would be mm-hmm. pushing the entire field forward. So I, I, I'm sad that it's ended because it's, it would have created many it's it's like you know uh zippers coming from the the nasa program right you know like the the sideways benefits that we get from these exorbitant ridiculous things that we end up doing to explore space um there you you can't account for that and that's we're going to be missing out on something from that here uh because and uh, you know for all of my naysaying i don't think that it's ever going to happen there's still lots of stuff we could have learned from mm-hmm. what they were doing to manage these robots, to try and get them to the right spot at the right time for, you know, trying yeah. to solve the problem of what do you do if the person's not home? Does the robot just sit there? Does it take it back? What, you know, yep. what are we, what are, what's going on there? So there's a lot of, you know, side pieces to it that would have been really amazing. So yeah, 400 people, I can totally see uh, having a division for that. Also, uh, just le- as a last note, uh, don't let's not forget that Amazon is buying Roomba, so they're not done with robots. The ro- right. no, robots no, 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 <laughs> no. This, this this won't be the last we'll hear about delivery to home robots. I guarantee <laughs> right. you. So uh, oh, another that's, that's the infinite problem, right? Is yeah. getting the getting the product to the door. That's yes, yep, that is the, the problem. <laughs> the last mile. So another story is uh, this headline from CNBC: Despite inflation worries, Americans are less likely to cancel Amazon Prime and Netflix than cut spending on food. And actually, you know what? This is a pretty good illustration of misinformation. Not disinformation, misinformation. Because when you dig mm-hmm. into the story, it turns out what people are more willing to get rid of are luxuries like buying more clothing, which is the last thing most people need, or going out to dinner. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, I'd rather not go out to dinner and keep 
watching Disney Plus and, you know, the Mandalorian's coming in February, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll cut a couple of restaurant visits for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no I, mean, I can watch this stuff every day. I'm not going to a restaurant every day. I mean, unless I'm, you know, unless I'm in my twenties and it's, you know, I have a big income and so in my wild oats or whatever, that sort of thing. Sorry for that image, but you know, it's, yeah. uh, but you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm out with my friends all the time, but for most people it's, let's get rid of some of these luxuries to prioritize these luxuries. Mm -hmm. um, what do you all think of this? Well, and it even mentions groceries, but it, it doesn't say that people aren't buying groceries. It's that instead of getting the name brands, maybe they'll start doing the store brands. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting, you know, the nice big steak, you know, fresh cut from the meat market, they're going to go get something that's, you know, like a hamburger or something like that. You right. know, frozen, frozen hamburgers or something like that. You know, they're going to go for cheaper options. You, you become a budgetarian, right? <laughs> right. You, what yeah. you can afford. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you have five kids... As you know, uh -huh. yep. <laughs> yeah, or more, uh, you, you, you're a budgetarian. <laughs> but you know the thing about this story that really was, uh, I found fascinating was when they talked about the percentage of people's income that is being spent on subscriptions. And those, mm -hmm. those are sneaky. I, so what I do, I have a spreadsheet oh, yeah. that I update every year and I audit. I go through what are all the things we're subscribed to, all the mm -hmm. monthly bills and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And do and what do they cost now as opposed to when I subscribe to them? Mm -hmm. And do yep. I still want them? And in many cases I do. Sometimes I say, you know what? I don't need that subscription anymore, but keep track. You know, we talk about how people's income is so much more today than say in our grandparents' time. But you think about our grandparents, they didn't have cable, they didn't pay mm -hmm. for phones, you know, cell phones. They didn't have all of these other expenses that we have now. And I think that's a fascinating thing to think about within this story. Mm -hmm. They had three channels and the kid had to hold the antenna for one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Well, and, well, and it's, the, it's in, um, the, okay. more than half of people underestimate their monthly subscription bills by at least $100. That's amazing to me. Like that's yep. a... Well, which I don't, well, I don't doubt it because yeah, you know, it's we did the same thing a yeah. couple of years ago. We started going through and like really tracking all of this stuff pretty, pretty detailed. Like, you know, I split them out by monthly costs and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, oh, wow, we're, we're subscribed to a few more things than we probably need to be here. <laughs> so let's cut <laughs> yeah. back on these. <laughs> the sneaky ones are the annual subscriptions. And uh -huh. they always catch me. It's like, oh, Sirius is coming renew again. Uh, yeah, I guess I need to use it. I need it. Yeah. Uh, that's, I wasn't planning on that 300 a year or whatever, or oh, MLB.tv is coming renew. That's $150 a year, you know, or whatever it is, you know, it's just like, and it sneaks up on you and you don't realize. So like, Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Right. Right. It, you know, the, it, you know, sometimes it's a good deal to get the annual, but you gotta, you gotta be aware of it that next mm -hmm. November, this is going to come up again. I need to be ready for that. You know, I need mm -hmm. to make sure I've got cash in the bank to, you know, in the budget to, to, but to pay for that. So mm -hmm. um, those are, I think that's an important aspect of this. So, I mean, the, the idea that people are going to be cutting back on luxuries to keep their subscriptions doesn't surprise me, but the, I, but the whole, this other thing about subscriptions in general, I think it's an important thing yeah. we all need to be careful of. And, and kind of the old advice again is if you do the free trial, make sure you put a sticky note somewhere to remind you to cancel before X date. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise and, you get dinged. And to paraphrase Mother Angelica, make sure the star quest is up there before you pay the cable and electric bill. Right. I mean, you got to like, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. She used to use, yeah, she used to use the gas and electric gas bill. Gas and electric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then the last story I want to talk about is Apple is, Interestingly now, getting into more banking services, they're going to introduce high yield savings accounts for Apple Card holders. So hmm. Apple Card is is the credit card that Apple does along with uh, through Goldman Sachs. That's the bank that they work with. And uh, I have an Apple Card in full for full disclosure, um, and I use it all the time for as many things as I can use it on because I. Uh, I want to get that one, two or 3% back and, and mm -hmm. it, it earns, it, it adds up. Um, and I pay it off, you know, as, as soon as the uh, charge is clear, I pay it off. And so I'm not carrying the interest because I'm really afraid of, the, of interest on credit cards. Mm -hmm. that, that's a real killer. Uh, yep. But it's a way to, and I really started using it during COVID when uh, Apple pay became not just a novelty, but real, a real thing. So, 
but then you get this money piling up from the, the cash back. For a while, I was just kind of paying that off toward the balance, but I've kind of been holding on to it. I'm like, hmm, this is a nice little cushion of like mad money, you know, just a little extra cash. Mm-hmm. But it kind of sits there and does nothing. And so what Apple is doing is they're going to set up these high yield savings accounts so that money can go into the savings account, earn a couple of percent, two or three mm-hmm. percent um, with no fees. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's one of these new, they call them neo banks, which are, mm-hmm. uh, they offer you much better yields and, and services. Um, it'll be in the Apple wallet with all of the, the whiz bang interface for that, which I guess the Apple wallet is really a great interface. And, mm-hmm. Um, and then you can link it to your bank account and you could actually move money from your bank account into it if you want. Um, and mm. you could use it to make uh, purchases on Apple, you know, Apple's app store and the other pl- movies and that sort of stuff too, or any place that takes Apple pay. So I don't know. What do you think? Is this, is this, um, is Apple doing something nefarious here? They just trying to grab more money or is this, do you think a real service? I feel like this is kind of the way that credit card companies are going. Um, I Discover just did it recently, and I I jumped in because I'm trying to. I was trying to find high yield savings accounts, and that was the yeah. best one that was out there. So, uh, and I, I love their app. I I really the Discover app is amazing. It, mm-hmm. it the mm-hmm. the you know it's kind of like a game the way they've got the uh the the returns <laughs> on the credit card set up. So you know every every quarter you have to look at what the thing is that yeah. you're supposed to be uh using it for. Um, so. I, I like it. And then they had this savings account that it could run it all through the same app. And so same kind of thing as you're talking about here. It's not quite as entangled with everything that Apple's about, but, um, but it was really nice just to have this one spot that I'm going to, to check my financials there. Mm-hmm. So I think, I, I think this is kind of more a, a general trend uh, in mm-hmm. the financial services right now. I, I wouldn't worry about it too much as like Apple taking over everything. Right. <laughs> I, I- I only wish it wasn't tied in with the card that you had to have the card to get the savings account. You know, I, I, cause I'd go for the savings account and you know, here, here, here's a hint, you know, for those of you who have to have the latest and greatest, well, a savings account is a good way to save up for the latest and greatest uh-huh. Apple toys. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's a very good way. And yeah. you don't have to, you don't not just, do you not have to pay interest into it? You get paid interest for right. doing it <laughs> even better. You get more money for doing it. That's the nice thing about it is like, you know, for Apple, their the benefit here is, if I have a a hundred dollars in there, that's a hundred dollars. If a hundred million customers have a hundred dollars in there, that's that's real money. You that's, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're earning interest on that, but above, over and above mm-hmm. the interest they're paying you. So there's a there's a benefit to Apple in in doing this, a, a financial benefit. Oh yeah. But yeah. But I like this idea of like yeah, I mean it it's incentivizes us to save up. Like I I wish yeah I want them to be able to do this for like my kids. Like my daughter, who's who's you know sixteen now, I, she's got her first phone. I would love mm-hmm. to give her a way to put money in and have money, be able to pay for things with it, earn yeah. interest on that, and start learning some financial savvy mm-hmm. now without having to have a credit card to do it. That would be I, I agree with yeah. you, Father Corey. Yeah, I, I wonder because I mean I had a checking account, and savings account when I was sixteen, and that's where all my my salary went for working part time as a nurse's aide. I wonder how yep. kids do that today. If they, because mm-hmm. we just went to the local bank and got it. I don't know how that works now. I, I do notice that their little yeah. pic. Okay, I do notice that their uh, their picture happens to show the savings account balance of twenty one hundred dollars. <laughs> huh? What could you buy for twenty one hundred dollars? Uh, oh yeah, fairly nice Macintosh. Yeah, right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was I'm amused by their uh, screenshots of like what they show in their screenshots. It's really funny. Uh, awesome. So uh, I'll be saving up for my uh, my my next new phone. I guess is what I'll be doing. Apple. Okay. There you go. You're gonna, you're gonna have my, you're gonna always have all my money. That's just the way it is. <laughs> so now I gotta ask you. So when you get cash back from your card, it yep. can go directly into the to the savings account. Yes, you can have it go directly. That, the cash back go directly. That would be nice. That, that is would be extremely really cool. nice. Yeah, that is really that's a cool feature. I because don't have right, that on my Discover Combo account, but oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to go look in that now because that would be really. Actually, great. I'm going to go look into the Discover Combo account because <laughs> I've got a Discover right? card. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. As like you can have it right now, you can have it go directly toward the balance, pay you know to pay off the balance on the on the card, or you could have it go uh, with, according to this. You'll have it go like right now for me. It goes into Apple Cash which is a separate app, but if it can go to Apple savings and then it's earning savings, yeah. you know, interest. Yeah. That would be ideal. Right, for me. See, we, we leave ours for the whole year. And then at the end of the year, we 
go and do something fun with it. Like, hey, yeah. look, here's all the here's all the cash back that we earned this year. Let's go have some fun. And yeah, <laughs> it would be nice know, if I it mean, was earning interest too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it no would kidding. be yeah. I would take my wife out for or take the whole family out actually by based on my annual probably annual. I could probably take the whole family out to dinner or something like that. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So let's move on to our picks of the week. And Father Corey, what's your pick? So I, I went with a fun YouTube. Speaking of el- something the algorithm dredged up, um, <laughs> I I think I'd seen one of their videos a few years ago. They've been around for five, six years, uh, but it got it. I got a couple of their videos this last week. I've been binging their stuff. It's called Viva La Dirt League. Yep. <laughs> and they are a group from New Zealand. Um, that does just geeky, dorky, funny little videos. Most of their videos are two, three, four minutes long, yep. which, by the way, YouTube, emphasize shorter videos like that, please. Mm. That's, that's my mm-hmm. rant. I hate the 20, 30-minute long videos. Give me four, five-minute videos. Anyways, um, <laughs> but they do these just great little videos. They're very well edited, very well filmed. They're funny. Now, there is language warning. There is content warning. Sure. They do they talk about things that are adults in nature. They don't show anything, but they do talk about and they do use they refer uh, to swear it. words. And yeah, they refer to it and their swear words and stuff like that. But some of their stuff, you know, they're I think they're probably their most well-known stuff is the epic NPC. Uh, epic NPC man. shows. Yeah. Epic NPC man, which it's this NPC. It's, it's basically it's, it's World of Warcraft. It's Skyrim. But it's like an NPC within that. And he's like self-aware of what's going on. Right. Um, another yeah. one that got that's well known is Board, where it's from a um, business. And actually, it's a real business, uh, Playtech in New Zealand. And they, um, they, uh, they actually take over this business and film there. And it's just hilarious, you know, business life and, and right. stuff like that. Kind of like The Office. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like The Office. Um, and then they got a bunch of other little ones. They've got... Uh, uh, FPS logic, D and D logic, um, uh, Tarkov logic. A lot of it is video games, jokes and in humor. So, um, a lot, a lot of the like D and D, so a lot of neat, nerdy, geeky topics and, um, and it's, but it's like, when you mentioned like it's, they're in the game, it's live action. Like it's real people mm-hmm. standing there, but they're kind of acting as if they're the characters in the game. If you can imagine yeah. it. Yeah. It is very funny. One, one of the recent ones I watched was, um, uh, using disgusting ingredients in a potion, you know, and oh yeah, that was great. And he, like it's like it, it's like because what it does is it points out the funny, weird parts of games. Like you have to like mm-hmm. like who's gonna drink something as an eye of Newton? That's gross, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Why are you going yeah. to gather fifty rat tails? What what is what is going on here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. Or uh, well, they, they, yeah, they got one actually like that. It's like to finish this quest, you need to pick four flowers. And the flowers are like around him. And so the, the, the adventurer goes, you mean like that flower? Yes, adventurer. So he walks over, looking at him, picks it up, walks to the next one. You know, yeah. it's like they're within 10 feet of the, the NPC. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it is very funny. It, 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 yeah, I gotta, I gotta say, I mean, not, not all, I don't get all the humor because I don't, some of these games I don't actually play, but uh, yeah, but it's, it's really good. It's really funny, really well done. They're a big channel. I mean, they have 4 million subscribers. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's funny. But it's just, it's, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I recently discovered them myself, and it's kind of funny how you can have these big YouTube channels that you know nothing about. There's a whole world out mm-hmm. there that you just don't know about. Yeah. Yeah, it, and they're, they're fun. Like I said, they're, most of their, their videos are very short, very easy to watch. Sure. You can watch two, three of them in 15 minutes and get a good chuckle. Yes, yes. Uh, I must say, uh, the 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 actresses are also attractive. I mean, just if, if that's yes. part of the thing, the, the men, the men yeah. I'm sure, are attractive as well. And and the yeah. scenery is beautiful because they are in New Zealand and, and they've got one. Yeah. They live in Middle Earth. I mean, come on. Yeah, they they got one that uh, Balin's Root, which is this this one NPC who literally it's uh, morning, nice day for fishing. Ha <laughs> ha. That's like literally the only thing he says. <laughs> that's right. It's like this half hour movie they did. Yes, but they filmed it in some of the same places. I think things like. Rings of Power and mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings were filmed. Oh, I that's mean, some awesome. Of the same locations. I mean, just beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. Good pick. That is a good pick. So my pick this week is uh, a Mac app called Solver 3. Uh, S-O-U-L-V-E-R. And it's a different kind of calculator app. Um, it's a calculator <laughs> app that's sort of a notepad calculator. And what I mean by that is um, you can... 
uh, you you just you get a blank sheet and you just type numbers and you'll type you know uh, let's see I was trying to figure out how much we're going to uh, we're 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 close to paying off our mortgage in the next couple of years yay so how much money are we going to save a month right well we're going to have to still pay taxes we're going to still pay insurance so I was able to do the, something like this I have a, a sheet and it says annual taxes equal dollar amount annual insurance equals dollar amount. And then I wrote out a formula, annual taxes and insurance as a variable equals mm -hmm. annual taxes plus annual insurance. So then monthly, I did that divided by 12. And then I, subtra and I subtracted that monthly tax and insurance from our mortgage payment. And now I know how, how much it is. And so you can use words. You can do uh, currency conversions. Mm -hmm. um, I, mm -hmm. I do a bunch of SQPN stuff on that. Like I keep track of uh, monthly downloads for some, certain shows. Um, and I have, um, like if I do a giving campaign, I keep track of how much, uh, people are giving each day of a giving campaign. Um, I do time calculations. Sometimes I have to calculate uh, how long segments are in a show. So I, I can write down like zero seven M space 20 S for seven minutes, 20 seconds, minus minus one M 24 S, you know, that sort of thing. You know how, how, how like time calculations are real pain in the neck, you know, in general, yeah. <laughs> because of the 60 seconds thing in the 60 minutes thing. And so this will do that for you. So it's good. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface here. There's so many ways to this and you can have, uh, you can save sheets, you can organize them, you know, so you can go back to them when you want them. Um, it's, it's really a handy. And, you know, once you start using it, you'll find all kinds of uses for it. It's really great for, like, say, in if you play D&D &D for keeping track of supplies. Mm. Uh, elven clothes, mm. three. Elven shoes, <laughs> one. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Traveling gear, riding, you know, food, coins. <laughs> and then I can subtract. I can just, you know, add and subtract from it. So uh, that's been very helpful. Um, so, yeah, it's Solver. And it is, so it's not cheap. It's $35 to buy. All uh, right. But you know what's coming next? It's available in Setup. <laughs> Yay! Setup is the best. Um, I, I really feel like a shill for Setup sometimes. Uh, but <laughs> and it, they can sponsor SQPN by contact. No. I know. We, I've said it before. Um, wait, let me, I'm double checking that, by the way. I think it is. Oh, you know what? It's not in Setup. This is the one that's not. Um, mm. But it's such a great tool. Um, if, if you ever, like, Check it if you think you might need it. Check it out. Go and see the examples that they give. Uh, it will really, you know, you, you you might you might see it and say, you know what, that really does me look like something that really uh, solves a problem for me. You know, for for many people, a spreadsheet in Excel may be the thing you need or numbers. Mm -hmm. But you know, this this is a nice little numbers playground. Uh, I the, the way they call it. Well, it looks nice because you can you can do some things in like real language. You could say, yeah. you know, I spent like here's one example right after the website, 350 euro in wine and cheese. I, you know, you could do if you're on a business trip, you know, five hundred dollars went to X business. This did this. This did that. You right. know, paid for the hotel and so on, and do it kind of real language, and it will pick the information it needs right out of it. And the nice thing is, is it it can determine like what is words that are that are just like labels, and what is. Uh, stuff that you are, you know, that means numbers. And what what mm -hmm. you don't see on the on the main page of the website is every page has a total at the bottom. So you you mm. you can keep a running total automatically uh, at the bottom of the of each sheet. So uh, it's, it's cool. It's really a really good tool. Yeah. Um, so those are our picks of the week. All right. So that's it from us. We would love to hear what you thought of anything we had to discuss today. And you can do that by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the StarQuest Facebook page at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media. You can send an email to technology at sqpn.com or visit our Discord community at sqpn.com slash Discord. And you'll find all the links from our discussion, including a bunch of uh, video links uh, that we we talked about in this episode and our picks of the week on our show notes at sqpn.com. Remember to like each episode of Secrets of Tech on Facebook, retweet it on Twitter, where we're at SQPN. You'll find us on Instagram at StarQuest Network, and leave us comments wherever you find us. We love to uh, hear from you wherever you are and wherever you find us online. We'd like to thank James for research assistance in this episode. Until next time, Father Corey Stika, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. Thank you, Don. And I'd like to thank Thomas Santarujo, 
who is just coming back. There he is. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. It's <laughs> been great. He dropped out. I was trying to try to vamp until you came back uh, and <laughs> just just missed it. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of Technology on StarQuest.